Hi, I'm Catherine, one of the PCC librarians. Today, I'll be teaching you about MLA citations. In this workshop, you will learn why and when to cite sources, how to create in-text citations in MLA format, how to create citations for a works cited list in MLA format, how to format a works cited page, where to find additional citation resources and get help. You may want to grab a piece of paper and something to write with in order to take notes. Before we begin, let's define a few terms. First, MLA. MLA stands for Modern Language Association. It's a professional association that advocates for the study and teaching of languages and literature. MLA publishes a handbook that specifies how to document or cite sources in MLA style. We'll be following MLA guidelines in this workshop. What is a source? Often, when you're reading a research paper assignment, you'll notice that you're required to use a certain number of sources. A source is just the place where you found information. There's a wide variety of potential sources out there, from newspaper articles to YouTube videos to scholarly journal articles to personal interviews. Finally, what's a citation? A citation is a reference to a source that you consulted for information in the course of writing your research paper. Now that we've defined our terms, let's discuss why it's necessary to cite sources. There are many good reasons to engage in this practice. First, citing sources adds credibility to a writer's argument. If you make a claim in a research paper, you'll want to back it up with evidence you found in authoritative sources. Citing sources shows readers where the author found information and allows scholars to build on others' research. If someone who reads your research paper is interested in learning more about the topic, they can use citations to locate the sources you used and develop their own expertise. Likewise, if you find a great article on a topic you're researching, you might want to track down some sources from that article's works cited list. Citing gives credit where it's due. When you use someone else's words or ideas, specifying the source is just the right thing to do. Finally, citing sources helps avoid plagiarism, which is something we all want to steer clear of. When is it necessary to cite sources? You must cite every time you use words, images, or ideas that are not your own. Of course, this includes direct quotes when you use someone else's exact words inside quotation marks. But perhaps less obviously, you must also cite the source when you put someone else's idea into your own words in the form of a paraphrase or summary. If you use an image, chart, graph, video, social media post or YouTube video that you didn't create, cite it. There are two types of citations. Some occur in the body of your paper. These are called in-text citations. When someone is reading your paper and they come across words or ideas that are not your own, they need to be directed to the source of that content right away as they're reading. The other type of citation appears at the end of your paper on the works cited page. Citations on your works cited page provide enough detail that your readers should be able to locate the source for themselves. Remember, every in-text citation in your paper must have a corresponding entry in the works cited list, and every source in the works cited list should be cited at least once through an in-text citation in the body of the paper. Let's go over the nuts and bolts of how to create an in-text citation. In-text citations are brief. They include only three elements, parentheses, an author or author's last name, and the page number where the words or idea you're using came from, if it's available. Here's an example. Let's imagine that I'm writing a paper on the history of Catholic schools in Los Angeles. I find a good source, an article from the Journal of Catholic Education. On page 172 of this article, 
There's some information about the rate at which Catholic schools were built in LA in the mid 20th century. I'm going to use this in my paper. So let's create an in-text citation. In this case, I've decided to put what I learned from the article into my own words, rather than using a direct quote. Here's my sentence. Between the late 1940s and late 1960s, so many Catholic schools were constructed in Los Angeles that every parish in a Mexican-American neighborhood had its own parochial school. Because this is not my own original idea, I need to tell my reader right away where this information came from. I do this by inserting an in-text citation. The first element of my in-text citation is a pair of parentheses. Next, I'll need the last name of the article's author. I see here that the article was written by Eduardo Lopez. So I can go ahead and enter Lopez inside the parentheses. Next, I'll need the page number. As you'll recall, I found this information on page 172 of the article. I'll add 172 inside the parentheses after Lopez. Finally, I'll end the sentence with a period outside of the parentheses. My in-text citation is now complete and correct. I could have taken a different approach, including the author's name in the sentence itself. Here's how that might read. According to Lopez, so many Catholic schools were constructed in Los Angeles between the late 1940s and late 1960s that every parish in a Mexican-American neighborhood had its own parochial school. In this case, it's not necessary to include the author's last name in the in-text citation because I've already included it in the sentence. So the in-text citation here is only the page number, 172. Before I turn this paper in, I would need to make sure that a detailed citation for this article appears on my works cited page as well. A few tips on in-text citations. First, as you already saw in the example, punctuation goes outside the parentheses. Next, there is no comma between the last name of the author and the page number. Finally, if there is no page number on the source you're using, you would simply leave out that element of the citation and just include the author's last name. You'll often come across sources with multiple authors, especially if you're using scholarly journal articles. For sources with two authors, as in our first example, include both last names in the in-text citation and the word and between them. For sources with three or more authors, list only the first author's name and replace the additional names with et al, which means and others. To get an idea of what your writing will look like when you're properly citing sources, here's an example of an article with MLA in text citations. Your paragraphs will be peppered with sets of parentheses, authors' names, and page numbers. Let's move on to the other type of citations, the kind that will appear in the works cited list at the end of your research paper. As previously mentioned, these citations are detailed and considerably longer than in-text citations. But here's the tricky part. What's included in a citation in the works cited list depends on the type of source you're citing. For example, a citation for a newspaper article includes different elements than the citation for a YouTube video. Today, I'll be demonstrating how to cite three of the most common sources, a book, an article from a database, and a page from a website. Books are the simplest type of source to cite. All you need is the author's last name, followed by a comma, and the author's first name. A period comes next. Add the title of the book in italics, followed by a period. Next, you'll need the publisher's name. This can usually be found in the first few pages of the book. 
That's followed by a comma and then the year of publication followed by a period. Here's an example. This is Jericho Brown's book of poetry, The Tradition, which won the Pulitzer Prize in 2020. You'll notice in my citation, I've plugged in all the required elements. The author's last name, comma, first name, followed by a period, the title of the book with all the important words capitalized, followed by a period, the publisher's name, followed by a comma, and the year of publication. It's that simple. Citing an article from a library database is a bit more involved, but the process is the same. Once you know the elements that make up a citation, you can find them in your source and plug them into the template. Like a book citation, article citations start with the author's last name, comma, first name, followed by a period. Next, you'll have the title of the article with all the important words capitalized. This is followed by a period and the whole thing is enclosed in quotation marks. Next comes the title of the periodical or publication in italics, followed by a comma. Then the volume number, issue number, publication date, and page numbers, followed by a period. Just like in an in-text citation, if you don't have a page number, you leave it out. Next comes the name of the database where you found the article, that's in italics, a comma, and the DOI or web address of the article. We'll discuss DOIs a bit more in a few minutes. Now, before we get to our example, let's talk for a second about the structure of information inside databases. I hope this will make it easier for you to find the elements you need to include in your citations. The smallest piece of information in a database is typically an article. We often use articles as sources. These could be encyclopedia articles, newspaper articles, magazine articles, or scholarly journal articles. In online databases, just as in print form, articles are contained in some type of larger publication. These publications might have familiar names like the Los Angeles Times or Vogue, or they might have more academic and probably less familiar names like the Journal of College Student Development. These publications are inside an even larger container, which is a database. Databases are just searchable collections of information in an electronic form. Library databases contain many different publications, thousands of articles, and they have names like EBSCOhost, ProQuest, Opposing Viewpoints, and Gale eBooks. When you're creating a citation, be careful not to mix up the title of the publication with the name of the database. Okay, now we're ready to move on. Here's an example. This is a scholarly journal article. The title of the article is long, which is typical of journal articles. College Student Binge Eating, Attachment, Psychological Need Satisfaction, and emotion regulation. This article has two authors, Su Jun Han and Soon Hee Lee. It's contained in a scholarly journal called the Journal of College Student Development. This journal is contained in a larger container, a PCC library database called ProQuest, which is where I found it. So the citation begins as usual with the first author's last name, comma, first name. Since we have two authors here, we're gonna add a comma and the word and before we have the second author's name. Note that this one is in first name, last name format. This is followed by a period and then the title of the article in quotation marks. Don't forget the period inside the quotation marks after the end of the title. Next, we have the title of the publication in italics the volume number, the issue number, the date of publication, and the page numbers, followed by a period. Note that we abbreviate volume number to VOL period and issue number to NO period. All this is followed by a period. Then 
the name of the database where I found the article, which is called ProQuest, and it's in italics, followed by a comma and the DOI. At the end, you'll always have a period. Our final citation example is a bit simpler. We'll cite a page from a website. Website citations start like the others with the author last name comma first name. In many cases, web pages don't list an author, in which case we'll just start with the title of the page in, a, in quotation marks with a period as usual. Next, you'll have the name of the website in italics followed by the name of the organization or company responsible for the website, but only if it's different from the name of the website. In general, you don't need to repeat information in your citations. This is followed by a comma, and then the publication date, or the date the site was last updated, followed by a comma and the website address. You'll include a period and then the date accessed. This is the date that you visited the web page and used it for your paper. Web pages are the only type of source that requires an access date in the citation. Here's an example. I'm citing a web page that doesn't list an author, so I start with the title of the page inside quotation marks. Next, I have the name of the website. In this case, the site is called Rain, and that's in italics. That's followed by a comma. I'm not including the name of the organization responsible for the site because it's the same as the name of the site. This particular page doesn't list a date of publication or update, so I'm leaving out that element as well. After a comma, I need the full web page address and a period. The final element is the access date which we write in day, month, year format, followed by a period. We're done. As we saw in that final example, if a source doesn't include an element such as author name, publication date, or issue number, you will simply omit that element. Now, remember the string of numbers called a DOI, which came at the end of our citation for the database article? DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. It's a stable link to an online source and it should be used if available. If there is no DOI for your source, provide the web address instead. When it comes to dates, such as publication dates and access dates, remember to use the day, month, year format. Use abbreviations for months with names longer than four letters such as December, February, and March. Some publications list a season rather than a month, and it's fine to use that as the publication date as well. Moving on to author names, citations in the works cited list follow the same model as in-text citations. If there are two authors, as we saw with our database article example, you'll include both in the format here. For sources with three or more articles, include only the first author's name and replace the additional names with et al. Before you submit your paper, be sure to do the following. If you miss a comma in a citation or forget to italicize a database name, there's a good chance your reader might not notice. But if you forget these basics of formatting, it will be very obvious right away. Here's the checklist. Title the page works cited. The title should be centered. List citations alphabetically by the author's last name. For sources with no author, alphabetize according to the first main word in the title. Ignore initial articles such as a, an, and the. Begin the first line of each citation at the left margin. Each subsequent line should be indented by half an inch. This is called a hanging indent. If you don't know how to create a hanging indent in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, Google it. Finally, double space throughout. Here's an example. You'll notice the centered title, Works Cited, at the top of the page. 
There are four citations here, and the first line of each begins at the left margin. The subsequent lines of each citation are indented by half an inch. The citations are in alphabetical order by the author's last name. The whole page is double spaced. Note that nothing is underlined or bolded. Your works cited page should look something like this. It's very unlikely that you'll remember every detail that was covered in this workshop, and that's okay. Librarians and professors don't remember every aspect of citation either. As long as you understand the basic mechanics of citation, you can always look up the proper format for the source you're using. Here are a couple of handy resources you may want to refer to. PCC Citation Guide and Excelsior College's MLA Style Guide. If you have any questions about citation or databases, sources, search strategies, and research in general, PCC librarians are here to help. We're available via email, 24-7 chat, and by appointment for phone or video consultations. Visit the library website at pasadena.edu library and click on Ask a Librarian to find all the ways we can assist you. You can also check out the citation guide I mentioned by clicking on the citation link in the middle of the big red bar on our homepage. Thank you for watching this MLA citation workshop brought to you by PCC Library.